welcome back everyone for today's Destiny 2 build session. Today's video will be looking into the R3's Embrace Embrace's exotic gauntlets for the Hunter and showing you what you can achieve with the exotic when you design it around Endgame alone. Out of all the exotics in game to be introduced, R3 has come out as a hidden gem for the PvP scene thanks to the exotic trait of allowing the user's phone knife to bounce a second time, have increased AA and increased damage, which can one-shot players to the chest if low on health or resilience. Now for what I understand with Exotic is that with a skilled player who knows what they're doing, can excel greatly with Exotic and catch players out who may hide around the corner or may hide behind cover, etc. But generally, what about PvE, as the Exotic states it can stun unshielded enemies for a short time and can stagger unstoppables. This is something I've explored and come back with some interesting results that I believe will make you want to try out in any endgame content available. Quite frankly, the build is very easy to put together, super powerful, and will allow you to even one-shot a champion if we activate Breach and Clear, Well of Ions, and the Skittering Stinger knife buff via Precision Kills. If the stars align, we can easily hit around 80 to 90k plus damage with a single phone knife. Sounds great, right? That's because it is, and once I show you what you need, you can try it out yourselves. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Way of the Sharpshooter for its instant trick ability with R3 and Brace, while at the same time utilising the precision and hit modifiers that will affect both my playstyle and gear. The combination of the Sharpshooter subclass and R3 indicates a neutral but basic understanding of what player style will be needed by the user to fully gain its benefits. The subclass, for example, focuses on all things precision, which will offer the user a wide number of buffs that they can use how they see fit. Weighted Knife, for example, provides extra precision damage, which will immediately recharge if a precision kill is made. Practice Makes Perfect reduces the cooldown rate of your super with each precision hit made. Knock em Down increases weapon stability and handling, and increases super damage while the ability is cast. And then we have Line Em Up, which allows precision damage for your super, increased damage, orbs of power drop, and extended duration. From gameplay shown, all of these are easily achieved and beneficial in whatever weapon you plan to use them with. Scouts, pulses and hand cannons, all requiring precision hits, tend to be the best weapons to pair with this subclass and also the best for what perk combination they can offer which will further enhance your playstyle. Hawkmoon, exotic trait, allows users to build up power casual shots upon precision or finer blows. The more stacks you have, the higher your damage will become which can be very powerful against a boss with a large crit spot. Now, with the ability combined with the subclass, you can see where the build is going. Landing position hits will grant you the subclass's perk, which will cause a continuous roll of active buffs to appear. All of this will improve performance on the field, but also increase damage drastically since Hawkmoon's exotic trait will be active. Knock him down will increase super damage, and Arthur's embrace damage is increased via any position kills. Also, adding in Breach and Clear for a 35% buff means all of our items will further be enhanced to the point of easily racking up over 200k in a large DPS dump. When building around R3s, it's important you think about how the rest of the subclass perks will react since R3s is pretty simple in activation. Everything else that follows will dictate how much your build will stack and help you survive for longer. If for weaponry, I've chosen a loadout that pairs well with a precision and stacking of damage setup that we have going. This can be customised to your liking as there are many perks that can fit into this playstyle, so don't feel threatened if you don't have the same weapons and perks shown. My primary in this case is the Hawkmoon as mentioned earlier in the subclass section, as its main premise is to build up stacks that will grant the user increased damage once that maxed. When combined with the Sharpshooter subclass, a lot of the perks will become active for 99% of the content you are in, since Precision Shots is the name of the game for the build. A very nice and relatively simple weapon to earn, the Hawk move can be gotten with different roles, which is something new for exotics, and allow users to regrind content to get a better role. It doesn't matter what role you have since the exotic trait is what we were really after, and the perks offered mainly improve the performance of the weapon via stability, range, handling, or reload speed, etc. Using a hand cannon also allows us to have the Overload Champion mod, which is very helpful for allowing us to stun them and then build up power casual shots with no effort. The secondary I plan to use is the All Wings mod with blinded grenades, field prep and demolitionists. As many of you are already aware, grenade launchers have had quite a bit of love this season with the anti-champion mods and the popular bridge and clear mod, which I intend to fully use with success. 
Originally, I want to use Divinity since that offers a debuff and also creates a bubble that turns the user's body into a crit spot, which would allow my knife to fully regen upon a successful kill with it. Then I realised I don't have the weapon, so I opted into using the Breach and Clear mod instead, which has its own benefits. Although it doesn't create a full body crit like Divinity offers, it does still provide a good 35% debuff which for all of our weapons and super will greatly benefit from. On top of that, using a grenade launcher is slightly better as I can also incorporate the blinded grenade's perk, which may not provide much damage, but will allow us to stop the majority of enemies' movement, which also means we can land our precision shots with ease. Any grenade launcher is fine, as breach and clear will still work, just make sure you have blinding grenades attached as it will really help you out. For heavy, I'm using the Coduella rocket launcher with impact casing, impulse amplifier and lasting impressions, and the plan here will be to use the rocket launcher alongside my super and breach and clear debuff to melt through bosses health very quickly as a DPS dump the moment we start a fight. It doesn't have auto load in the holster which would have slightly increased the DPS for us, but that's not a problem as we can rely on our dodge to auto reload. Because of how huge of a damage the build provides, you can freely opt into using any other setup as you will get the same result either way, with different damage numbers appearing. Royal Entry is a good alternative as this frame type allows you to fire an auto tracking missile for better precision, or you can get the Beringer's Memory with Spike Grenades, Clown Cartridge and Auto Loading Holster, which will grant you a massive buff in damage through its magazine size alone. For stats, our main focus is to invest into intellect and strength, as these are the two main areas that we heavily use throughout the build. As we plan to use our melee non-stop, we will need to have this area just high enough for our basic regen rate. For this, I plan to only get this area up to 50 to 60 and then finish with mods. The reason behind this is that we can get a guaranteed full melee back without the need of heavily investing in this area, but with the risk of needing to use your finisher. The 1 2 finisher mod states that it will restore our melee charge if we sacrifice 1 6th of our super, which is a fair trade. Each time I use my finisher, I can get my full melee back, which means I don't have to worry about missing my shots or needing to use the Monte Carlo just to survive. At the same time, we have the Invigoration mod and Elemental Well mods such as Well of Ions and Over the Well Maker, which will grant us not only energy to the lowest recharging ability there, but also a massive 30% buff to melee damage alone for 10 seconds. All of this will become active the moment I use my finisher as planned. My intellect has been left at 50 since I plan to use my master weapons to produce orbs of power and use ashes to assets to gain super energy and grenade kills. This will lead back into my grenade launcher which has the demolition perk and allow me to consistently have grenades available at all times. Nothing more is needed to be added here. After that, you are then left with improving whatever area you would like to improve on next, so the key mods are now covered. At this point, investing into mobility will grant you the next best benefit since we can rely on the dodge feature a lot more often than shown. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For head, we have discipline, ashes to ashes and overload well maker mod. R, we have minor discipline, unstoppable grenade launcher and overload hand cannon mod. Chest we have Resilience, Gagas of Damage times 2, an Elemental Orders mod. Leg we have Strength, Grenade Launcher Scavenger, Invigoration, and Well of Irons mod. Cloak we have 1 2 Finisher, and Breach and Clear mod. So, with the completion of the build, you should have a rough idea as to how the build works and where it will be most effective in all content. The idea of the build is to stack damage via Pigeon Shots that will ultimately grant you a large damage boost from your super, weapons, or throw knife. This here will allow you to keep up with the high level content as you continuously grow, as you don't need to worry about opting into using a specific loadout for the content of your choosing, unless you come across an event that requires you to swap, which is quite rare for most endgame content. Utilising our primary, we can build up power casual shots for a huge damage boost if we land all of our precision shots. This combined with the overload mod will allow you to easily stun and then take out a champion enemy within one magazine, or get them low enough for you to use your finisher. With that, we then have our super, which can also increase our damage if we land position shots and also activate knock them down, which will be a consistently active perk via Hawk Moons and its effects. And then lastly, we have this throwing knife that will rely on our precision weapons to increase its damage via the Skittering Stinger perk and Well of Irons, which will provide a 30% melee boost. Now, to get the most out of the knife, you will need to have Skittering Stinger also get trait active, Well of Irons, 
and Breach and Clear, which will provide a 30% debuff on Ultra to bosses. If done correctly, you can easily hit around 80 to 90k melee damage, which when applied to a champion for example, can one shot them if stunned already, or bring them down to at least a finisher level. This will vary at times though depending on where you hit them, as if it's not a precision hit, you will lose out on your knife fully recharging. To count on this, having the 1 2 finisher mod, as mentioned earlier, will be vital as it will grant you a full melee charge back upon finishing a target, with a trade off of 1 stick for your super. Everything here will be outputting large damage as long as you land your shots and not forget to apply the debuff mod. Although we don't have a weapon to counter barrier champions, they're not that much of an issue. I found that the main issue with the build is that anything that involves match game that will result in needing to swap out selected weapons and needing to be very precise with the build if you want to get the most out of it. Match game isn't too much of an issue if you have weapons already to replace what you have, and don't take too much away from the original of the build. But the price for positions can be an issue considering how strong the aim assist in game is. I have lost count for the amount of times I've thrown my knife at a specific target, only for an enemy at the last moment to walk in front of me and either make me miss or they tank the shot. On some content, this isn't much of an issue as we can easily recover, but the higher the difficulty, the harder it becomes to recover so easily. Now, don't let this put you off from trying to build them, as it's fantastic against all types of enemies and can allow you to mop up champions within a single hit, thus allowing you to save ammo. On top of that, it's also packing a lot of power on all grounds, something that is needed if you want to explore master tier content with wide success. It may not be Grandmaster tiers, though it has a place if you're skilled enough, but more or less normal legend and master content is where the build was giant, and if you like big numbers, then I'm sure this build will fit right into your own loadout. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall lore content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.